Okay, good morning. My name is Sherry Schuler Faust, and this morning I'll be presenting um, online with the CMC on the gen basis of genre. Um, the PowerPoint is currently um, in L2, if you're interested in that. And after the presentation, I will also include the PowerPoint with my notes. Okay, so um, these are the things that will be covered. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about subject headings and authority records, as well as look at some examples. Um, and just so you know, a great deal of this information has come from the FAQs on genre form headings from the Library of Congress, which was updated um, June 6 of 2011. Okay, so what is a genre or a farm term? Genre farm terms describe what an item is, not what an item is about. The subject heading Western films would be assigned to a book such as Cowboys, such as Cowboy Courage, Westerns and the Betrayal of Bravery by William Hampus. A book about, this is a book about the history and criticism of bravery in films and television shows from the golden age of Westerns. The genre heading Western films would be assigned to the film, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, which is a Western film. So the difference is um, genre terms are what the item is and subjects are what the item is about. Okay, so the difference between um, genre and form, um, genre corresponds with the intellectual content while form describes the physical characteristics or purpose. Examples of genre terms would be romantic fiction, detective and mystery films, ghost stories, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, examples of form headings would be something such as uh, graphic novels or periodicals. So now that we know what genre and form are, what's a subject heading? Um, by definition, Definition, subject headings describe what the item is about. You can have a one word subject or a string of words that make up the subject, but each of these words or a group of words are describing to the user the aboutness of the item. What the item is about, not what the item is. So, um, as most of you probably realize, um, that we use a lot of terms from the LCGFT thesaurus, which is the Library of Congress genre farm terms for library and archival materials. Um, it's a long, a long name for that. Um, so the LCGFT thesaurus describes works and expressions using terms that indicate the intellectual or artistic expression of the work or the genre, as well as the mode of issuance, the form. For example, a television series released on DVD is assigned the genre farm terms indicating that it is a television program, not a DVD. Also, LCGOT terms cannot be used as topical headings. For example, radio call-in shows, which is the LCGOT term um, in, in, the, in that thesaurus, um, is not an LCSH subject heading, so you would not see radio call-in shows as a 650s second indicator zero in a record because it's not in the LCSH subject, subject um, uh, directory or whatever you want to call it. Okay, <clears throat> so the use of LCGFT genre form headings, um, the LCGFT terms are single words or phrases that contain only one concept and are entirely contained within subfield A. Multiple LCGFT headings can be used in the same record. For example, in the film we talked about earlier, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, you could have um, the terms, the LCGFT terms, Western films or spaghetti westerns. You could also have fiction films and you could have feature films. So also data already found in the bibliographic record are not repeated. For example, since the language of the work may already be coded in several other places within the descriptive portion of the MARC record, for example, the 008, the 01, the, I'm sorry, the 041, the 130, the 240, and the 546 fields, there's no provision made for language within the LCGFT term. Therefore, you would never see 
an LCGFT term, Western Films, comma, English. Additionally, um, LCGFT terms cannot be subdivided geographically. The argument is that geography is not a part of the genre or form of a work. A detective mystery, a detective and mystery story is a detective and mystery story regardless of where it took place, whether it took place in England or the United States or New Zealand, it doesn't matter. It's still a detective and mystery story. Um, so also, if you want to bring out the geographic location of something, you would do that somewhere else in the record, um, specifically mark tags 043, 257, 520, 650, or 651. So I'm sure some of you notice, maybe um, it's, it, you don't really notice it so much in the um, OCLC authority records because you're actually looking at two, you have to go to two different places to see them, but in some of your some of your um, authority records within your own um, catalog, you may see that there's two records that are, that appear to be exactly the same. Um, so like subject, like we said before, subject headings describe what a work is about while a genre form heading describes what a work is. So if you search ghost stories as an LC, LCSH heading, um, its meaning is for material that discusses ghost stories as a subject of the item. You can also search ghost stories as a genre where the meaning applies to materials that are actually ghost stories. So we'll take a look at that. So in this one, um, as you can see, the first screenshot right here um, shows what your catalog may look like. So it has ghost stories with 200, 2,074 items attached to it, and here's a ghost stories with, with five items attached to it. So when we look at um, the actual authority records, um, you see that this um, second screenshot here, the LCHS authority record, um, this would be if you had an item that is just discussing ghost stories as the subject of the item, such as the history of ghost stories, criticism on the writing of ghost stories, etc. This screenshot here um, shows an authority record in the LCGFT authority file. And these are for items that are ghost stories, such so the about ghost stories. Um, such as the case of the green dress ghost by Lucy Banks. And that particular book is about um, Kester Lanner, who becomes involved in the family business, catching supernatural ghosts as he finds himself in a struggle with a powerful and haunting ghost. So that is a ghost story. So um, the, there's very many... Um, so the sauruses that you might see, and the most, when, the ones that we use the most, um, you will see item or um, 655s for the LCGFT, which is the Library of Congress genre form terms for library and archival materials. Um, you may also see terms in the GSAFD. Um, which, which that's the guidelines on subject access to individual works of fiction, drama, et cetera. And you may also find some in LCSH, which, which is the Library of Congress subject headings. So this is a list of some of the other possible thesauri that you might find um, in, your, in your record um, that are genre form headings from these different thesauri that um, are certainly available to you if your LSAP um, agrees to have these within your catalog. So here are some examples of um, a bibliographic record using the genre form headings. So we're going to go back to that book, The Case of the Green-Eyed Ghost, which is a book about a, a man who is involved in the family business of catching supernatural ghosts. Um, and he, this, this, so this story is is a ghost story. On the left, you'll see the improper use of the genre term ghost stories and paranormal fiction. Using the terms in this fashion would be for a book about 
paranormal fiction and ghost stories instead of what our particular book is. It is a ghost story. So therefore, the record on the right shows the proper use of the term since the book is a ghost story and is paranormal fiction. So now we're going to see examples um, again um, with the opposite effect. So um, this is a book, uh, Medieval Studies and the Ghost Stories of M.R. James, about the writing of a ghost story, of ghost stories, I'm sorry, by M.R. James. It focuses on the intersection between his scholarly work and his fiction, arguing that his two careers are intricately, intricately intertwined. Um, thus, it's a book about ghost stories and ghost story writing. Therefore, the record on the left is incorrect because this book is not a ghost story. It is about the writing of ghost stories. So the record on the left clearly shows that the book is about the history of ghost stories and the critique of M.R. James' writing of ghost stories. Okay. Um, so um, you can also use LC subject headings as genre form headings. So there are many terms um, that you find um, that are not a part of the, of the thesauri of the LCGFT or the um, GSAFD that you would like to use as a genre form term. For example, board books and large type books are not a part of either of those two thesauri, but those terms are what a lot of materials are, are in our terms, is, and not what they are about. The Policy and Standards Division realized that some libraries would like to use those types of terms as genre form headings, so they are allowing the use of LCHH terms to be used as genre form headings as long as the scope note within the authority record allows for such usage. In these cases, the mark coding for these terms would be 655 with the second indicator 0 as opposed to 7 um, without a subfield 2. And since there's no subfield 2, you would not have any sort of the SARI acronym, um, meaning like LCGF, LCGFT or GSAFD. So here's the scope note in the authority record. Um, if the scope note, which can be found in the mark tag of the authority record 680, um, says that the heading is used for work, the works of, or using our term is, a given type, then it can be used in mark tag 655. If the scope note says that a heading is used for works about or on a given topic, then it cannot be assigned to a 655. And this rule is taken directly from the FAQ on genre form headings from the Library of Congress, which was updated, um, as I said before, June of 2011, and this is actually question 35. Okay, so the scope note, um, which I said before was in Mark Tag 680, is telling the cataloger that board books is for works of we're using the term is of a given type and that type of sorry and that type of book is on sturdy paper with the cover and the pages being of the same sturdy material intended for young children in addition to allowing use as a genre form heading the term board books can also be used as a subject heading if indeed the item being cataloged is about board books and this is stated um, in the phrase as well as works about such books So, and here's two examples of board books. Um, in the first example, the term board book is used as a subject and is coded as such in the mark tag 650 with the second indicator zero. Since this is a book or catalog illustrating the various products of Baby Einstein, including a listing of the board books they have in the marketplace. Therefore, this is about board books and where to find them. The second example is for the term used as a genre form heading since 10 Little Dinosaurs is actually on board pages intended for young children. So it is coded as a genre form using mark tag 655. So it is a board book. Since the genre form heading is not in the LCGFT or GSAFD or any other thesaurus, the second indicator is zero, which tells the cataloger the term is from the Library of Congress subject headings. 
Okay, so this is a list of the source resources that I use in the presentation. I use the introduction to Library of Congress John Reform terms, and I also use frequently asked questions about Library of Congress John Reform terms for library and archival materials. That is a mouthful. Um, and both of these um, hy hyperlinked are take you to the PDF of these two um, resources. So, oh, um, thank you for attending this presentation. And on the call today, I, besides myself, I though we have Ian Anderson and Shelley Stone. I don't believe Vince is here today. Um, I think we have Aaron Rose and Edie Elliott and um, Pam Thomas. So. Um, I'd like to say, please remember to complete the evaluation form on L2 under my events. And at this time, we'll entertain any questions you may have on the subject of genre form headings. And after we've um, had a discussion on those or questions on those, um, you, then you can ask any other questions that you might have um, on any other cataloging type subjects. So, are there Hi. any questions? There are. Hi, this is Pam again. Uh, Julia asks, so would large print books be another example of one that can also be used in 650? And then she added, or sorry, would it be entered as a 650 second indicator zero? 655 second indicator zero. So if you, if you have a large print or large type book, um, then it would, then you would put that in a 655 second indicator zero. Or actually, I that might even be in the LCGFT now. I'm not, I don't have a way to, um, to get to my uh, computer to see, but um, in any case, if, if your book is actually a, a large print book or a large type book, it would be in a 655, not a 650. The 650 would be if you have uh, if you're cataloging something that is talking about um, how to, or maybe, I don't know what you do on large print books, um, how publishers decide what is large print and what is not, because that would be a book about large print books, not what, not, not a large print book. Okay, Julia just says thanks. Um, she has a lot of records to correct. <laughs> okay, so yes, if anybody has any questions, you can either type your questions down in the chat box. Um, and if you don't know how to use the chat box, it should be down on the bottom middle of your screen. It says chat and you just click that to open it up and you can type your chat in. Or if um, you would like to unmute yourself, you can ask your question directly to Sherry. Hi, Sherry, this is Donna Shaw. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Wonderful. Um, quick question. I need to do a couple of original um, works. They're all children's books. Um, is it required in OCLC to add a genre heading? No, it's not required at all. Okay. Only if it fits. Only if it fits. Yeah. Okay. So um, if the original well, like, cataloging you're doing are, are they're all board books, then you would, then I would say yes, you need and they're you not. Need to add that. Um, um, but if they're, um, I mean, children's books, you could you know have the ghost stories. You could have paranormal. They could be detective and mystery. Um, so anything that applies, it doesn't matter whether it's a, a children's book or an adult book. The genre forms you know go across all um, levels of, of uh, so, audience so levels. Do you, do you do something as basic as just fiction or do you actually say like juvenile fiction? And I know Cher doesn't like that. <laughs> right, <laughs> <But> okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, speaking to the, to the people out there that are just in Cher, um, we don't want those really, those terms that are just really ambiguous, you know, fiction, um, or sometimes you see literature, um, and they're all terms in the thesaurus, but we have elected to not bring those into our, um, our catalog. But they're certainly legal terms. So in OCLC, you will find them, and that's perfectly okay. Um, and anyone who um, is not a share ca uh, cataloger, you would do whatever your, um, 
uh, your LSAP tells you to do. Um, so, but just know that they're all, if they're in the, the LCGFT thesaurus, they're certainly, they can certainly be used. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. That was a good question because we're really seeing a lot of those now. Um, and sometimes they're just, the terms are just kind of like who's ever going to search that term. So, because you get so many hits, it would be necessarily beneficial, but they're certainly legitimate terms and can certainly be in the record. So does anybody else have any questions? You can either type in the chat or um, unmute yourself and ask. Um, we are planning on taking the summer off, um, although we have also um, received some suggested topics. So um, depending on if one of those topics gets developed in time, we might add one uh, this summer, but um, otherwise the next online with the CMC will be in August. Um, and also, if any of you do have topics that you would like us to cover, um, please add those um, to the evaluation form when you fill that out on L2, please. If you don't have any other questions about genre headings, um, we will also answer questions about general cataloging topics. Um, this is Donna again. I actually do have a question about um, access, I guess. I'll call it that. <laughs> um, in different catalogs, I think it's really hard to pull up sometimes like homeschooling materials. And I was wondering, is there a way to um, add something that you could actually search by that? I... I don't know. Once again, I'd have to look. Yeah. I'd have to, you know, search the um, the authority records to see what what term possibly, can be used. Yeah, what term could possibly be used? Um, you can also always request request suggest. From, yeah, yeah. Request from you can re you can suggest things to um, LC about different terms um, and I don't really know the process of that but um, I think they talk about it for a while and then vote on it um, but you could also add it to your local catalog as long as your um, as, as long as your uh, LSAP agrees to that well, I was asked, because um, of course I'm in share, and I was asked, um, we got a grant for homeschooling materials. So we added like over 300 items. Mm -hmm. And I was asked by several people on the listserv, hey, give me a list. And we weren't completed, you know, cataloging them all yet. Some of them, the records were really bad in OCLC, so I had to do some major upgrading, et cetera. So we're about finished with everything now. But um, the question is, if they go to their pack, it they can't limit to my, just me, mm, you, to know, your library. you know, right. you know what I mean? Because if yep. they limit to my library, it's just them. I guess I could point them to my pack and right. say limit, and but there's like it doesn't seem to have a subject heading for it. It and it's really difficult, you know. Um, Yes, they are in a collection code. I see somebody in chat, Gwen. Um, they're, they're, they are, but the collection code is for homeschool. But again, if they're in their pack, they can't limit. Right. I guess they could do it inside Polaris. They were trying to get their moms and dads or whoever is doing the homeschooling to be able to search for the items. Um, so can, you, can you create local subject headings like in the 690? Not without a, she's a share library, so not. Not without, without approval, approval from share, services. but I, yeah. I guess okay. I'm seeking a way. To an help. easy way? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, not an easy way. Well, but, to, a but way it to should help. be an easy way. <laughs> um, but again, unless they go to my pack and say, 
you right. know, in advanced search, collection code is homeschool, they can't find these find resources. These. Yeah. yeah. And if they just search for mathematics or science or et cetera, then, you know, it's, it's open to major interpretation of the keyword search. So if anybody has a, a, a better solution or something I should add. So Edie's saying there's an LCH. Heading of subject heading of homebound instruction and one of homeschooling so so yeah so definitely use that just notice that homeschooling is two words okay and so that is what kind of is that a six be a 650 second indicator zero 650 second indicator zero and look for that term okay so should i then modify the ones that my items are attached to should I modify them in Polaris? Should I modify them in OCLC? I'm never sure. <laughs> um, if they're all, if that subject heading is relevant for all those materials, then yeah, I, I would, I would add that subject heading in, in OCLC and Polaris, but that's just me. Well, I mean, these are like workbooks and things like that. So mm -hmm. I don't think they could be interpreted as anything else. Else, sure. Mm -hmm. But yes. homebound instruction, I mean. Right. I think we have a few that might be a questionable one, which I probably wouldn't do. Okay. But, but homeschooling is a little more general. And, and if it applies, then yeah, if it's a valid subject heading. So yeah. And then that would be searchable. Okay. Yep, it would definitely be searchable. Maybe I'll do a few of them and just see what happens with that. Okay. Yeah. Thank and you. Check the display. Yeah, and check the display and see what happens. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions related to genre headings or any other general cataloging questions? Again, you can type your questions in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask them. If there aren't any other questions, um, we would like to thank you for attending. And again, our um, next session will be in August and they're always a third uh, Thursday from 10 to 11 and um, you can find them on L2. Sherry, did you want to say anything else? Um, no, just um, thank <laughs> you for attending. And um, I do think that genre headings are very confusing to people. And, um, you know, you just have to always think of, is it or is it about it? So that's what always should always play in your head when you're trying to decide whether it's a LCSH 650 second indicator zero or whether it's a 655 second indicator seven. Okay. And um, Sherry will be putting those um, slides with the notes in a PDF format on uh, L2 in a little while. And we'll be sending the recording out when it's ready. Um, someone else has to do some magic to make that happen. So thank you for attending and we'll see you in August, unless if we get one ready before then. <laughs> All right, thank you everybody.